Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1751. The topic is Mindset and the title is Improve Your Triage Skills. Hmm. Well, I've been listening to the book Your 168 by Harry Kramer. The last name is spelled K-R-A-E-M-E-R. Harry Kramer. I'm listening to this book because my wife Meredith got into Kellogg for her MBA in the fall, which is badass. I think it's the number two um, business school in the nation, so pretty freaking awesome. Super congratulations for her. Harry Kramer is going to be one of the teachers, and his book is recommended to the students. So why the hell wouldn't I listen? (laughs) Of course, you know, if the best business minds in the nation listen to this book, then hell yeah, I'm going to as well. Now, the book is focused around trying to create a happy life even within the chaos of life. And one concept that came up recently in the book that I really wanted to share was the concept of triage. The author has worked for a medical products company, which means he's been connected with hospitals. And hospitals have to constantly manage patient concerns and prioritize patient needs just based on critical issues. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, you know, is this person going to die now? Is this person maybe not going to die? They just have the sniffles. It's just basically you're trying to manage people as they come in and out of the hospital all the time. It's 24-7 nonstop. They're constantly thinking what needs the most attention and resources. Now they think who needs the most attention and resources, but I'm going to promote that you think of what needs the most attention and resources. And they have to think of this all day, every day. And that's what we have to do in order to live our best life. We have to constantly ask ourselves what needs the most attention and resources. In an emergency room, you get people coming in constantly. Some aren't as severe as the people who are already there, so they have to wait. Some are more severe than the people that are there, so they take precedent and everyone else gets bumped down the list and everybody's got to wait a little bit longer. This process of shifting people based on priority is triage. How are your triage skills? You start the day with goals in mind, but as the day goes on, you get flooded with new requests, new demands, new needs, new urgencies. How well do you manage all of that chaos. Do you know what your most critical needs are for the day? Are you ensuring that what's necessary isn't getting bumped for what's urgent? Urgent and necessary are not always the same thing. Now, when I plan my day, I consider my big things, kind of my critical needs list for the day. And for me, that's my meals, my workout, and then anything that has a definitive time start to it, such as appointments. Those are really the big things I think of every day, Uh, you know, in terms of like tasks to, to get done, is meals, you know, when and what am I going to eat, workout, uh, when and where am I going to work out. And then what time-sensitive appointments do I have that day? And then the rest of my day, I fill in the gaps. So, for example, on most days, I wake up at 6.30. I prepare a liter of water with essential amino acids. It's uh, basically just a nice big influx of fluid because I usually wake up dehydrated. And the amino acids are nice just because it's a good flavor to the water because I actually don't like the taste of water. People tell me water doesn't taste like anything. Well, whatever it doesn't taste like, I don't like. (laughs) So I don't like the taste of water. So I want some kind of flavoring. So I use essential amino acids because they just help get more protein into my system. And since I'm working on muscle growth right now, a little extra protein floating around the bloodstream isn't going to be a bad thing. Uh, So I get in the liter of water with the essential amino acids. And I also take uh, supplements in the morning. I take a joint supplement and a digestive supplement. So I'll, I'll prepare the liter of water. I'll get my supplements out. And I drink the fluid and I drink the supplements while I prepare daily foods. So I cook the foods for myself and my wife every morning. Uh, Now, some days I, you know, I cook ahead different batches and all this stuff. But I usually have an attention to what foods need to be prepared today. 
Some days I have more time, some days I have less time, so some days I bulk cook, some days I don't. So it just kind of varies a little bit. And then, once I've prepared the daily foods, I eat my first meal of the day. That whole process takes about an hour. If in the, This is like the longest case scenario, where I'm preparing like bulk meals and doing the most of it. So it takes about an hour. Well, that's good for me to know. <laughs> because if I have something that day at 7 a.m., I either have to get up earlier... I have to break the task apart, or I have to be okay with doing it after the 7 a.m. thing. So that's kind of the decisions I get to make is, okay, I, I, I know I want to get my water in. I want to get the supplements in. Maybe I don't have time before the thing at 7 to do the daily foods, but maybe I can still get a meal in. So then I'll prep the daily foods after that thing. But this is what I pay attention to. I think to myself of balancing meals, workout and then anything with a definitive time, like appointments. And then I think of like appointments of the day. You know, so if I have Zoom meetings, you know, at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., okay, well, do I have time before that to work out? Or do I have time after those to work out? Those are the questions as I think through my day. When and what am I going to eat? When and where am I going to work out? What time-sensitive appointments do I have that day? That's my critical needs list. Do you know what yours is? Do you know what your critical needs list is for the day? What are your top one, two, or three things that you want to get done that day? And then you fill everything else as you can. So just like a hospital, if there's a person with a potentially fatal wound, they're on the critical needs list. And everyone else's care is addressed in the gaps. Their care gets filled in around the critical needs. This is a mistake I see people often make, is they don't actually like sit down and think through and define what their critical needs list is. They think they do, (laughs) but you don't. (laughs) What I mean by that is they know they need to eat better. Well, I I know I, I, you know, I hired this trainer. I have this coach. He's telling me I need to eat, you know, X amount of calories in the first couple hours of being awake. So I know I need to eat when I wake up. What do they do? They sleep in, they frantically get ready for work and they eat nothing. Or they eat something that doesn't have the right amount of calories, doesn't have the right amount of protein. They didn't prepare to have the right food available in the house. So they have an idea of what they need to be doing, but there's there's not enough preparation, there's not enough thought, forethought, to making it happen. They know they need to eat better, exercise more regularly, but the chaos of the day comes in, and those elements, those needs, get bumped. They never reach their goals. They're frustrated. They feel like a failure. They're perpetually unhappy. And their quality of life suffers. For what? Hitting the snooze button for an extra 15 minutes? Why aren't you preparing food at night? Because you want to watch two, three hours of television? Maybe you overeat at night because now you're really freaking hungry because you didn't properly eat during the day. Maybe you don't go work out because you're tired as hell. You just want a chance to sit down and relax. But you then stay up too late. You don't sleep right. You don't eat your food during the day. And tomorrow night you're tired as hell again. So you skip your workout again. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you giving up a better life for? 99% of the time people are giving up a better life for stupid shit that doesn't make their life any better. What are you giving up your life for? 15 extra minutes of sleep? One extra stupid television show you're not going to remember tomorrow? What are you doing? What are you allowing to bump your critical needs? You're attending to paper cuts when you have gashing wounds. Emotional wounds. Mental wounds. Wounds. There are things you were unhappy about in your life, and you're giving up the chance to make those things better for stupid shit.
that has got to drive you nuts. <laughs> it drove me nuts. That's why I'm continually trying to better myself. You know, I, I, I like who I am. But I also like trying to continually improve upon who I am. I think now, I'm, I'm 12 years into owning Brutal Iron Gym. And I do way more now than I did in the first couple years. Which is crazy because now I actually feel kind of more in control. I have a better quality of life. My emotional health is significantly improved. My physical health is significantly improved. The first couple of years of the business, I was overwhelmed. I was trying my best. Absolutely, I was trying my best. But I was overwhelmed. I was struggling to get my workouts in. I was struggling to eat right. I was struggling to make money to pay off all the you know loans and crap. It was a struggle. But through it all, I listened to my clients about their stories of life. I listened to audiobooks when I could. I read books when I could. I continued to try to learn more and talk to the resources that were available to me. Watch videos on YouTube. Listen to books. Talk to people. I tried to soak in more and more information. One of my best friends, uh, the first person to ever join the gym, owns a very successful small business. I used to work for him. <laughs> and I would look and see, okay, well, what does he do? In what areas can I continue to improve? I stayed hungry. I stayed kind of like pushing, stayed trying to continually progress myself. I got tired as hell. Some weekends I just slept all weekend. Some weeks I got grumpy and mad and didn't work on anything. It's It goes through seasons. You go through waves. But I continue to try to work at it. And that has allowed me to now be managing even more, but have a better quality of life. I am certain that you are trying your best. But I'm also certain that there's probably a couple spots where you're like, ah, crap, I could be doing a little better. That's my encouragement. Maybe my encouragement comes across as me being mad and yelling. But <laughs> it's meant to be encouraging. Um, if there are areas that you want to improve, try a little bit. Try something. Try anything. If you don't know what to do, re talk to people. You have me for free. You can send me an email, brutalironjim at gmail.com. Tell me what you're struggling with. I'll make a podcast totally for free. You probably have friends and or family that have struggled through similar things. Maybe you can talk to them. Maybe you can listen to an audio book. Hell, you can listen to Your 168 by Harry Kramer. Great book. You can find free videos on YouTube. Continue to try to expose yourself to experiences and knowledge. So that way you can get a better grasp of what's going on in your life. I would encourage you to sit down and actually write out what are your top three critical needs for the day. And you can do this every day. It, it does not take that long, I promise you. I mean, you're talking about two minutes. You can set a two-minute timer on your phone, and you can do this every day. What are your top three critical needs for the day? When will you do them? When, when's your plan A to do them, and then when's your plan B to do them? What do you need to do them? What resources do you need? Do you need to have certain food available? Do you need to have money? Do you need to have time? <laughs> you know, how long will they take, right? Do I need 15 minutes? Do I need 30 minutes? Do I need an hour? I encourage you to work on your triage skills. Write your top three critical needs for the day. Your plan A of when you're going to do it, then your plan B of when you're going to do it. And then what you need to do them with. Resources and time. How much time will it take? What do you need to have so you're ready for it, right? And then fill in everything else around it. Don't let the chaos of life bump your critical needs. You do need to eat. You do need to exercise. You do. It will significantly improve your quality of life if you are more consistent with your calories and your protein and you're consistently moving yourself. You will feel a million times better even in the struggles to attend to your food and attend to exercise. You will feel better in those struggles than you would feel with the struggles of missing those things. 
of feeling yet another day wasted. I would rather be in the annoyance and frustration and challenge of growth than decay. So I encourage you to think through your critical needs. What are the top things you need to do this day? When is your plan A to do them? When is your plan B to do them? What do you need to do them? How long will they take? What resources do you need? Plan that out every day. And it will improve the quality of your life. Okay? Well, if you need anything, if you actually want to ask me anything, because I think I got grumpy there in the middle, so I scared you away. But if you ask, actually want to ask me anything, uh, I'll be nice. But you can send me any questions to brutalirongym at gmail.com, and I'll make a podcast for you. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on our website. And if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening. <laughs>